Will templates continue to exist in the future of CMS? That was the question I was asked by one of my subscribers. Is the future modular content and should you forget about templates? When you consider architecture is moving towards headless architecture, moving towards Mac architecture, and we're starting to use more and more headless CMS rather than the traditional CMS, it kind of makes sense that you should focus on modular content and templates are a thing of the past. And that was my initial response. But it kind of bugged me. It just, it just felt lazy to just give the answer that, yeah, that's the way it's going to be. So I decided to investigate. What is the truth? Are templates really going to disappear? And is modular content or atomic content the way to go? Right, let's get to it. As templates are probably the most overused term in the industry, let's clarify what a template is in this particular context. So templates evolved out of the need to actually manage and maintain HTML pages. The first step towards that was something called the server-side include, which was a global piece of code that you could enter on every single page. And what would happen when the page rendered on the server, the server would take that bit of global code and inject it into the final render. And then CMS Tech came along, which took that a step further. What it actually did was allowed you to create placeholders inside the HTML where your content would be placed. So imagine taking a piece of HTML that would end up being a page and drawing lines around the areas of code where you wanted content and then getting a pair of scissors and actually cutting out holes in the HTML where you want the content. So that would allow a developer to take a piece of code, put it into that placeholder so that when the page was rendered, the CMS could inject the content into that template. These placeholders also allowed you to inject system data from other systems as well as content from CMSs. Templates were mainly used for pages, but you could also use them for widgets with inside a page. And what a template ultimately did was combine the layout, presentation, style, content, and the data all together into one page all at the same time. And going back to the question around, do we still need templates? It's a really tricky question if you think about it, because a template in old CMS world actually combined content and presentation and logic all together. So we have to actually consider the UX componentry as well as the content when it comes to, do we still need a template or should we focus on modular content? To understand how we can componentize the UX architecture, I'm going to take a theoretical framework created by Brad Frost called Atomic Design. And what Atomic Design did was it took the analogy of chemistry and related atoms, molecules and organisms to UX design patterns. So he defined the atom as the most elemental component within HTML, like a tag. For instance, a button or a label or an input field. And a molecule was a collection of those elements brought together, just like atoms form a compound, a basic compound. The UX atoms could form a molecule such as say, a search box. And these molecules really form the backbone of the entire UX design. So once you have your molecules, you can now assemble those molecules into organisms. Those could be very complex organisms or really simple organisms. The header at the top of every web page could actually be considered as an organism and the search box molecule would be a part of that organism. So what you could do is break down your page into organisms. And then you could take each one of those organisms and look at what molecules are they formed from. And then those molecules would be composed of atomic elements such as labels, images, and text. What I find really interesting is that he actually broke that analogy and he started to use templates and pages. And that's because during those times, the technology was really based on generating flat HTML. How it was justified was the shift from functionality to context. What the templates did in this model was create the layout or the structure of the page. And a page was actually an instance from a template. And you can see how that analogy really works well when it comes to generating and managing HTML, especially when HTML was generated on the server in templates and then pushed into the browser. It made a lot of sense and it really helped push design patterns forwards. And it gave a structure in which developers and designers could work together on building websites. So where does that leave us when it comes to the question of modular content versus templates? Clearly, in this pattern, templates are still needed to organize the overall structure of the content in a page. So what does that mean today when we've got frameworks like React and Vue, which are completely based on components? Well, let's take a look. 
So modern day frameworks like React and Vue are there to build applications rather than websites and pages. The way that you use these frameworks is to create components and you either combine those components to make more specialized and more sophisticated components, like a molecule for instance, or you assemble those components into larger experiences just in the same way as you take molecules and create organisms. But where it differs is when it comes to the page itself. Pages are not templates with holes cut in to plonk in the components. The pages are really containers for the components that will build the experience for that actual page. So let's look at the components themselves because that's where it really comes together. First thing you should really understand about these components as opposed to components used in a template is that these components are isolated. And what that means is that they control their own styling. They contain their own code and they separate content, data and state from the presentation. Whereas if you're using components in a templated based system, you'd be basically using shared JavaScript libraries and shared CSS. And the downside of the templated approach was you could never really remember which JavaScript libraries you needed, or you would bundle everything into one giant JavaScript library. So you'd get a huge amount of code included on every page that didn't necessarily need to be there. So the page load was huge, and this could have a real dramatic impact on your overall site performance. Another key feature of modern day frameworks and apps is that they are reactive. So in the old world, you would generate the HTML and fire it up to the browser, and it was fairly static at that point. But with these new frameworks, they're completely reactive. They provide a whole set of interactivity without a page refresh. Because each component has their own state and is responsible for updating that state and updating the presentation based on that state, you can do things without refreshing a page. Plus they're designed to cascade those state changes throughout any other dependent components. As components are responsible for their own styling and their own code, it means you only load the pieces you need. So if you could do me one favor, if you like this so far, could you just scroll down a bit, press that like button, and I'd really appreciate that, thank you. So getting back to the question, should we focus on modular content and our templates a thing of the past? Well, looking at these new modern day frameworks, it seems that is the case. You can build entire applications just from components without any need of templates. So let's look at the content, let's look at headless CMS and see if there are any dependencies for templates in there. So we know when it came to traditional CMS, it combined content, data, and presentation all together into a single component that it placed inside a template. So the rendering technology in the presentation was bound around the content and the data. But when it came to headless CMS, headless CMS has no preconceptions of the presentation. There are no dependencies on how you might render that content. It could be rendered in any way that you wish. This is because content from a headless CMS could be used in any number of web channels and any number of web applications any number of native applications or even IoT and voice. Because there's no constraints on how that content is rendered and you have this huge amount of flexibility in terms of how you can model the content, the business can actually model the content however they want. It could be based on their own unique business concepts. It could be based on how they want to use the content, such as blogs or articles. And what Headless CMS gives you is the ability to model the content in smaller units that can be assembled and combined into bigger units that then can be combined into bigger modules. And those modules can be assembled into pages. And this isn't that different to the atomic design analogy. I talk about this in great detail in a video I did previously called The Hidden Superpower of Headless CMS. I'll leave the card over here. <laughs> Another great thing about using modern day frameworks with headless CMS is they also isolate content and data away from the state and the presentation. That means you can model the content the way that you want and relate the content blocks in the CMS to those components. Based on the fact that you can create content as building blocks and assemble larger pieces of content from those building blocks and that there are no dependencies in the app frameworks for how that content needs to be structured, it means that you don't really need templates anymore. So the answer so far is that, yeah, you should consider focusing on content as building blocks and forget about templates because in the new world, they're irrelevant. However, as with all technology, there are always exceptions. There's always some fly in the ointment that stops you getting the perfect world. You may also have legacy systems that still require templates. And if one of your primary channels is email, you still have to use templates there as well. If you're careful with the design of your content in the headless CMS, it actually shouldn't really make that much difference because ultimately email is just another head.
So in conclusion, building content as modules makes sense. Using a headless CMS to build those modules has huge advantages. And I talked through this actually recently in a video, are you generating enough content headless CMS to the rescue? And I'll put it, put it up here, a card up here for you. And it looks like template technology is gonna be a thing of the past. Even though there are still legacy systems out there and systems like email that will still require templates, you should really focus on building your content as building blocks, building it based on your business concepts and abstracting it away from the presentation layer and using headless technology because you'll get the most advantages. You'll be able to push that content out across different channels and across different devices and get far more reuse and it should hold you in good stead into the future. But that's not to say that there aren't still many considerations when you're designing your content strategy, when you're designing your content types and you're using headless technology and you're using headless CMS. There are still considerations around UX and components and where the management of these new components is going to live. Because if you're not careful, the developers will build in the management of all of those UX components in the code itself and you'll lose the ability as a business to manage that. And that's something I'll talk about in later videos. But what's really exciting is we're in a world in which you can now start defining your content without any considerations for the rendering technology, without any considerations for the presentation layer, which just empowers you and gives you so much more freedom when it comes to creating and delivering content that's relevant and exciting to your customers. Unfortunately, that's all we've got time for today, but I'll just ask you one favor. Could you scroll down a little bit, press that like button if you enjoyed this video so that other people can benefit from it and more people will see this video. So for now, it's thanks and goodbye.